What if there was an easy way to learn how to use your fingers when we're playing, playing the drums, even if you had never held a drumstick before? Furthermore, what if there was a way to experience the complete freedom of loose, uninhibited rebound without even using the correct grip? I know this sounds crazy, but this method actually makes a lot of sense and can really help with making sure you know that you're getting maximum rebound, that you know the feeling of it. And if you've never played drums before and you're just starting out, this can really help you with that. So you know how rebound is supposed to feel. And you know how to even begin using your fingers before you ever even learn how to grip the sticks the right way. We're gonna go through all this today and I'm gonna show you how to grip your sticks the right way. We're gonna talk about how to train your fingers and make sure you're getting loose rebound. This is really cool, so let's dig in. And hey, we're gonna be talking a lot today about hand technique, but if you wanna go even more in depth, I wanna give you something you can take with you so it's not just a video on YouTube, but something tangible that you can download completely for free. It's my free PDF e-guide, the Fast Fluid Hands Checklist. Four steps to unlock your hands for maximum speed, control, and volume range in four simple, easy to follow steps. That's a great companion and complement to this lesson that'll help you go deeper. All right, let's get on with the lesson. I'm gonna show you that wacky grip that you saw in the thumbnail and why it works. I'm gonna demonstrate it to you, show you exactly uh, what's cool about this. And I, I know there are gonna be some people out there who are like, Steven, this is ridiculous. I'm never gonna do this. Well, maybe it's not for you. Uh, what I, the people I'm targeting here are maybe beginners or any drummer who's trying to just get the hang of, get the feel for loose, relaxed rebound. Because we wanna be able to toss the stick down and it pop right back up. And it's hard to do that right off the bat because you have to figure out exactly how to grip the stick in order for that to happen. But with this weird kind of grip, you can do it with little to no effort. And so it's a great beginner way to at least get the feel, understand the feel of that rebound and even the feel of using your fingers right off the bat with very little effort. Now, I didn't come up with this. It was actually presented to me on two separate occasions from two separate one-on-one -on -one coaching students who live thousands of miles apart from each other. So shout out to Mike and Joe for coming up with this on their own. They were both thinking through, they've been working on doubles and everything and loose grip, and they were both independently thinking through like, huh, how could I have better taught this to myself? Like if I were gonna go back and teach doubles and loose rebound to myself and finger control to myself, how could I do that? And they both landed on this, this weird grip. So very interesting to me and it made me think, you know, I'm sure other people have stumbled upon this too. I don't know if there's any videos on YouTube about something like this. Maybe this is the first because it goes so much against the uh, you know, drumming academia and what we consider to be good technique. So why would we ever have someone do something totally wrong? But it's a means to an end, it's a means to an end. So don't ever consider yourself above something uh, if it actually might make sense and help you get to where you need to go. And so if you're a beginner or you're trying to get loose grip together, understand finger work, this is a great place to start. The reason this is so powerful is because once you know the feel of loose rebound and the feel of finger work, then you'll know what you're aiming for. You'll know what that mark is. You'll know when you've arrived there when you're actually doing it with proper grip. And so it kind of helps set a benchmark and an expectation in your mind because it's very difficult to get the loose rebound feel if you've never felt that before. And so this helps you get that right off the bat. So, okay, without further ado, here's how this works. All we're gonna do is grip the stick between these two fingers. So between knuckles and the, the finger joints right here, this is all we wanna do, just grip it right there. Uh, it doesn't even have to be a lot of pressure. If you've got the stick in between there, these two fingers are just gently touching each other here, then it should be able to pivot back and forth in your hand without slipping out because uh, the, the bones here, the joints of your fingers should be bulging enough that it'll keep the stick from slipping down and so if it's nestled right here, it really shouldn't go anywhere. And that's what makes this super simple and easy. I'm doing this right around the American flag of a Vic for a stick. So it's kind of that normal balancing point, grip point of a stick. So we're just doing that. Just letting the fingers hang out like this, nice and loose, tossing it down. And it's just gonna bounce totally freely because there's nothing stopping it. We're just instantly providing a hinge right here, a simple hinge, letting it bounce. We could also let it come up and then squeeze a little tighter to stop it. We give it some force, throw it down a little bit, it'll come back up. And so this, doing this, if you can get that together quickly, easily, that is the feeling that we wanna go for, where it's just this loose, uninhibited rebound. That's, the, that's my phrase all the time. I'll talk about loose, uninhibited rebound, and these things can make a lot more sense when you're actually able to experience them. And so if you're new to the drums, or you're new to maybe 
evaluating your technique in detail. Maybe you've played for decades, maybe you gigged with bands back in the day, or you've been gigging for years, but you've never really mastered hand technique. Sometimes this is a good place to start, just to check and see, okay, if I do this, am I getting better rebound than when I'm doing this with normal grip? If so, something needs to change. And so it can be a good litmus test, a good indicator of, well, is my grip in good shape or not? So no matter where you're at and you're playing, this can definitely help you out. And that's why I say this isn't above anyone. This is a great way to reevaluate. And especially if you're a beginner, it can most definitely help you out. So what we want to do, have the stick right here, practice doing this. And what's interesting is that these fingers right here can naturally curve around a little bit. And we can actually, just by doing this with our, with our hand, with our fingers, we can start to do a little bit of finger control right off the bat. And so we've got the stick position here. Without even moving my wrist, I can propel the stick just with my fingers here. It's mostly just middle two fingers. So middle finger and ring finger propelling it. Pinky's not quite catching it. Middle two fingers. So literally this is all that's going on here. My hand is just opening and closing. Don't overthink it. Don't overanalyze it. Finger work with drumming is nothing crazy. We're going to break this down a little more in a moment. Nothing crazy. It's just hand opening and closing. And when you're doing this grip, it's literally just this. Index finger isn't even really doing anything. It's just those middle two fingers. And so practice that. You know, start off just with this. Practice throwing it down, letting it pop back up. And then practice using your fingers. It's okay if the stick starts to slip around. That's, there's a reason why this isn't our default grip that we want to do, because this can eventually kind of make your fingers hurt, especially if you're having to put in too much pressure. And if you're playing around the kit, it's going to end up hurting. You would end up building like calluses on your bones and like all that crazy stuff. So we definitely don't want this to become a default grip, but it's a great way to test your grip and to get started. So now we know how it's supposed to feel. We know what our end goal is. We know what that feeling needs to be. So to take this a step further, just to you know, get you a little more in depth here, we want to transition from that into normal grip. And so what we want to do, and what I end up doing most of the time with my grip, is I actually use a middle finger fulcrum where the stick most of the time is hinging like right here, the middle of my middle finger, actually between these two joints. Right here, thumb is directly across just like that. Now in doing the, the free bounce drop like this, I could go down here, have the stick rest like that, or I could have it more like right here. Those details aren't super important here. And I, I'm kind of going through this quickly just to give you a good overview of how this should work. But if you've got your pivot point right here, index is loose, that means we've got space within the hand. And if the fingers extend, if we've got finger extension, that allows for that rebound. Most of the time, if you're trying to play singles and you're not getting rebound, it's either because the fulcrum isn't steady, like you don't have an actual hinge. You have to have a hinge point. It's gotta be a hinge point. Mine is right here. So maybe there's not a hinge point or fingers aren't extending and so the stick's coming down but it's not able to bounce up because your fingers are curling around it too tightly like this. So we wanna extend the fingers to allow the butt end to swing out and the tip of the stick to go up. And so that's what you want to work toward. I've got a whole bunch of lessons on this, on the details of hand technique. And so I'll link that playlist in the description so you can see more of this in more detail, including some slow motion footage. And so those are the two things to focus on. Fulcrum, so edge of thumb, middle finger forming that hinge, and then extending the fingers to allow the rebound. When you can get that happening, you should have that same free rebound. And remember, you can always go back and forth, go back to this and go, okay, this is how it's supposed to feel. This is the amount of rebound we're supposed to have. That's what I'm aiming to get here and just work it this going back and forth until this feels as loose and free as this did. The difference is that now when you're gripping correctly, you're going to be able to do all sorts of different things and be able to play softly well, loudly well and have more control. Because We don't want to just be loose. We also want to be loose, but have control too. There's not much control with this. That's why this isn't our normal grip. Plus it starts to hurt after a while. And so you don't want to do it that much. So that's, that's why we, we grip the way we do. Just use this as your guide. So back to the fingers, bringing in the fingers. Sometimes the, the finger extension thing can be tricky. So that's the part two. Once you get the fulcrum, fingers have got to extend. But sometimes 
if, if you're not used to using your fingers like this, it can be really weird. And so you want to very intentionally target your fingers and build finger strength and agility because that can help even without playing fast. Like when we're playing fast, of course, we, we have to use the fingers to play this fast. We can't play this fast with our wrist. I mean, maybe we could, but I'm not gonna jackhammer my way through some fast singles. We've gotta use the fingers. And so that's important for, you know, we've gotta train our fingers to do that. But in order to extend our fingers, we're technically using them, we're moving them. And so to build that brain connection with our fingers so that this can happen more easily, it can actually help a lot to train our fingers, even if our goal isn't to play super fast singles. So a great way to do that is pinch the stick up here on the tip, or you can do it on the butt end, whichever you wanna do. Pinch it on the tip. It's gonna feel pretty heavy if you do it on the tip end, but if you pinch it tightly, lower your arm like this, or extend your arm like this, lower the stick, bring the stick up and down just with your fingers. Practice doing this quickly. Have lots of stick motion. We don't wanna just do this right here. We can do this, this can be part of your practice routine, but also go a little slower and have more stick motion and adjust your, your wrist so that the stick comes up and is stopped by your palm before it slams into your arm so that your arm's not hurting. It's okay for it to come up and hit your arm. That's kind of what we want, but we don't want it to hit super hard. And so practice doing this, start off slow to get the form right, to get the mechanics right. And then as you get faster, you start to feel a burn. You start to work out these fingers. And that's, that's big, that's really important because you're training your fingers to open and close and to work. You're training your fingers to work. And now all we have to do is then slide the stick through. Same exact motion, just other end of the stick. Do it on the pad or on the snare, symbol, whatever. And we're using our fingers. Now a specific tempo. Practice eighth notes, one hand at a time, at 140 beats a minute plus. Getting up to 150, 160 can be a good sweet spot range too where you can sit here and you can play these softly, by the way, soft eighth note singles, 140, 150, 160. You can play them just with wrist. You can play them loosely where it's kind of just the, you know, super loose, gun, 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 where it's almost like the stick starts to look like it's flopping, it's flexible, bending in the air. Do that and it kind of causes your fingers to do a little bit too, or you can just use your fingers. And so practice those three combinations of just wrist, a little bit of wrist and fingers, and then just fingers. Do that at 140, 150, 160, and as you get quicker, it makes more sense to just purely use fingers. Remember, we're not trying to do this loudly, we're doing this softly, because that's what fingers are good for, playing soft, quick singles. And all of that is gonna help translate over to doing this, where now your fingers are learning how to intentionally work. Our fingers aren't just passive here, they're active participants in our grip. And so the more you can train your fingers to open and close and to follow the stick and do what they're supposed to, the easier the slow singles, the slow rebound is. And so all of this comes full circle and it all comes back to, all right, that's what we want. That's the kind of looseness that we want. And you can even practice finger training with this, like we first did. This is kind of the feel we wanna go for. And this doesn't feel that much different from this. Either way, it's still just that open close. Don't overcomplicate it, just open close. This is one of those things that doesn't need to be more complicated than it is. Keep it simple. Follow these steps, start off with the litmus test, see whether or not your, your grip is creating that free rebound. And if you're a total beginner, start here. That's really gonna help you out, get you off to a good start so you know what to expect, you know what the benchmark is, and you know when you've reached that with your grip. Now, there's more detail we could go into. We could go way beyond the scope of this video into the mechanics of grip, because that's so important. You know, when you master grip, that makes everything else on the drums easier. That's such a core of the core fundamental things, and it's very underrated, uh, under-talked about, but here at The Non-Glamorous Drummer, we focus on the under-talked about, the underrated, the non-glamorous, because these are the things that influence the rest of your playing, and they make everything easier, they help you be more musical, more confident, more comfortable, and at home on the drums, so that you can go into any scenario, playing any song, any gig, knowing that, hey, my hands are working. I'm reaching my full potential, I'm being the drummer that I am meant to be, and I'm sounding good, and looking better too, being more relaxed while I'm playing and having good posture. All those things follow good hand technique. So download that guide I told you about back at the beginning of the video, the Fast Fluid Hands Checklist. Unlock your hands for maximum speed, control, volume range, and four easy to follow steps. Just check boxes, steps you can go through to make sure you're doing things right. Match your hand up with the picture. There's pictures, screen grabs of what I'm doing so you can see exactly where the stick needs to be, where the fingers need to be. 
You can check your progress as you're going. This gives you something concrete, specific to download, physically take to your practice room so that you're working these things and making sure that you're making progress because that's so important. So go grab that guide. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, if this was the first non-glamorous lesson you watched, welcome. I'm glad you're here. I hope you get a lot out of this. Be sure to subscribe. There's a lot more lessons and I hope you'll go deeper with me. I hope you'll download this guide because it's going to help you out even more. I'm going to send you some additional free tips just to help you out with your grip and with perfecting these things. And so that's going to really accompany and complement this lesson very well. So thanks everyone for watching. I will see you on the next video. Stay non-glamorous.